This guide covers all the actions Thaumaturge and Black Mage learns from level 1 to 50 in order. We go over how each action is meant to be used and recommend ways to use it when relevant. In the summary, we'll cover a detailed attack rotation for use at level 50 that encompasses all of the things you learn throughout this guide. Now then, Blizzard is your starting spell. I will refer to it as Blizzard 1 for the sake of clarity. Using Blizzard 1 makes you enter the Umbral Ice State, signified by 1 to 3 blue shards in your elemental gauge, and the number of shards corresponds to the level or stage of Umbral Ice you are in. To start, you only have access to the first stage, but later on, casting Blizzard 1 again will increase the level. The Umbral Ice State has these effects as shown. The important part is that it causes you to recover an enormous amount of MP every 3 seconds. Keep in mind that MP recovery is directly tied to server ticks, which happen independently from you entering this state, so sometimes the first tick happens half a second after you enter the state, other times it takes the full 3 seconds. As black mages have very limited opportunities to actually move during combat, it may be helpful to learn about the concept known as slide casting. I have a short explaining the subject if you're interested. At level 2, you learn the spell Fire, which I will refer to as Fire 1 for clarity. Using Fire 1 will make you exit the Umbral Ice state if you were in it, otherwise it will instead put you in the Astral Fire state. Opposite to the Umbral Ice state, Astral Fire has these effects as shown. The important part is that you don't recover MP at all, but your fire spells hit much harder. Naturally, Blizzard 1 will also cancel Astral Fire instead of entering Umbral Ice if you are in Astral Fire state when you cast Blizzard 1. Since level 1, you also have the trait Aspect Mastery, which makes your fire spells free during Umbral Ice and your ice spells free during Astral Fire. At this level, this isn't a particularly important effect. For now, you should cast Fire 1 until you can only cast Blizzard 1, after which you switch to Blizzard 1 until you have full MP, then cast Fire 1 again. At level 4, you learn the ability Transpose. If you are in either Umbral Ice or Astral Fire state, using Transpose will swap you to the first level of the opposite state. If you are not in a state, then Transpose does nothing. Whenever you need to switch state, use Transpose instead of casting Fire 1 or Blizzard 1 twice. A tip regarding Transpose is that it also resets the duration of your current state, so you could use it repeatedly out of combat to stay in A state, which allows you to kickstart your rotation faster. At level 6, you learn the spell Thunder, or Thunder 1 for clarity. This spell applies a damage over time effect, or DOT for short. If the target survives the full duration of the DOT, it does slightly more damage than Fire 1 boosted by Stage 1 of Astral Fire, so it is generally recommended to make sure Thunder 1 is always up on your target. Optimally, consider reapplying Thunder during Umbral Ice, since Blizzard 1 is the weaker option there by far. At level 8, you learn the role action and ability Addle, which causes your target to do less damage for a bit, with magical damage being reduced twice as much. The best time to use Addle is when you're expecting a large amount of damage from an enemy, especially if you know it will be magical. Good examples include when a boss is casting a party-wide attack or a large strike on the tank. At level 10, you learn the role action and spell Sleep. However, outside of extraordinary situations or perhaps solo situations, crowd control is rarely used at all, so you may never find this spell very helpful. Notably, the damage over time component of Thunder does not break sleep. At level 12, you learn the spell Blizzard 2, which does damage in an area of effect, or AoE for short, around your target, and just like Blizzard 1, makes you enter Umbral Ice or exit Astral Fire. Due to a longer cast time, Blizzard 2 beats Blizzard 1 on 3 targets and is equal to Fire 1 in power on 3 targets, making it unnecessary to bother switching to Astral Fire in the first place. Blizzard 2 beats Thunder 1 on 4 or more targets, but that's assuming the enemies survive the full duration of Thunder 1, so for 3 or more targets I recommend just using Blizzard 2. At level 14, you learn the role action and ability Lucid Dreaming. If you end up in a situation where you are not in either state and are also completely out of MP, you can use Lucid Dreaming to recover, as it recovers 550 MP every 3 seconds. At high levels, there are strategies that employ Lucid Dreaming for very niche optimizations, but in normal play, this ability is not very helpful to black mages. At level 15, you learn the spell Scathe, which does instant damage that is unaffected by the effects of both Umbral Ice and Astral Fire. As such, even if its chance to do double damage is activated, a so-called proc, it will still be much weaker than Fire 1. The only benefit to using Scathe is that it is instant, so it is viable while on the move. 
As it does not benefit from Astral Fire in any way, using Scathe while in Umbral Ice allows you to recover MP, which does help in general. It is worth mentioning that the ineffectiveness of this spell is to a degree that a significant amount of black mages never use it. At level 18, you learn the spell Fire 2, which is a fire version of Blizzard 2 in every way. On three or more targets, use Fire 2 until you are low on MP, then use Transpose and switch to Blizzard 2 until you are full on MP, and then Transpose again. If you have enough MP to do so, you can also finish an Astral Fire state with a Fire 1 cast, if you deem it worthwhile. Also at level 18, you learn the role action and ability Swift Cast, which allows you to skip the cast time of your next spell with a cast time. This can be useful to cast an extra spell while running, or to keep up the attack while you reposition. At level 20, you learn the trait Aspect Mastery 2, which unlocks access to Umbral Ice 2 and Astral Fire 2, which have the following effects compared to their Stage 1 equivalents as shown. The key difference is that Astral Fire does even more damage, and Umbral Ice recovers MP even faster. Using an Ice spell while in Umbral Ice 1 will advance you to Umbral Ice 2, and using a Fire spell while in Astral Fire 1 will advance you to Astral Fire 2. Using the opposite element will still reset you to no state, and Transpose will always switch you to the first level of the opposite state. At this level, Fire 1 in Astral Fire 2 is stronger than Thunder, so it may be preferable to really prioritize applying Thunder while you are in Umbral Ice anyway. At level 26, you learn the spell Thunder 2, which is an AoE alternative to Thunder 1. Thunder 2 is stronger than Thunder 1 on 2 targets. Despite that, it is recommended to only use Thunder 2 on 3 or more targets, due to a trait unlocked at level 28. Take note that a single enemy cannot be affected by both Thunder 1 and Thunder 2 at the same time, so on 2 targets, you can simply apply Thunder 1 to each enemy. On 3 or more targets, apply Thunder 2 whenever it runs out on your targets, although preferably it should be done during Umbral Ice if possible. At level 28, you learn the passive trait Thundercloud, which causes your Thunder 1 to have a 10% chance, and your Thunder 2 to have a 3% chance, every tick of damage, to cause the Thundercloud effect. This effect makes your next Thunder spell instant, free, and in addition to applying its normal damage and damage over time effect, also will do its full damage over time effect up front as a bonus. Dots deal damage every 3 seconds on a server tick. As such, you can expect a dot with a duration of 18 seconds to hit a total of 6 times for the listed potency. This trait makes it crucially important that Thunder is always up on your target, as a Thundercloud boosted Thunder spell, regardless of which one, is better than all of your other spells at the moment. You should also use Thundercloud procs immediately when you get them, unless you know for certain that you will need the instant cast to keep up the attack within a couple of seconds. At level 30, you learn the ability Mana Ward, which puts a shield on you that, weirdly, does not cost any MP. When you expect big damage to come your way, use this. I would not recommend that you use it to eat avoidable damage, but I guess I cannot stop you from doing so, so just make sure to use it early if you do do that. Also at level 30, doing your class questline will eventually lead you to the Black Mage quest, which is available once you complete the main scenario quest, Self Management. Once you unlock the Black Mage, remember to equip your Soul Crystal to change into the Black Mage job. The starting action of the Black Mage is Mana Fund, which immediately recovers 30% of your MP, even in Astral Fire state. While the cooldown is rather long, the payoff is relatively small, so you should simply use it as often as you can in Astral Fire state while you have less than 7000 MP. Optimally, you want to weave it right after an instant spell like a Thundercloud proc Thundercast. This is because using it after a casted spell will delay your next spell cast due to animation locking. This also holds for any other abilities such as Swift Cast or Transpose, however, for Transpose, it is not like you have a choice most of the time. At level 35, you learn the trait Aspect Mastery 3, which unlocks access to Umbral Ice 3 and Astral Fire 3, which have the following effects compared to their Stage 1 and 2 equivalents. Umbral Ice 3 can max out your MP in just 2 ticks instead of 3, and it also makes Ice spells completely free. Both of the Stage 3 states also cut the cast time in half of the spells of the opposite element. Aspect Mastery 3 also causes Blizzard 2 and Fire 2 to instantly both remove the opposite state, but also max out their respective states, allowing you to easily switch between elements on AoE, and also makes use of the fact that the opposite element spells are free. You also learn the spells Blizzard 3 and Fire 3, which both have significantly higher cast times and MP costs than Blizzard 1 and Fire 1, and not the damage to compensate for it. 
Their main purpose is that they also allow you to instantly switch to stage 3 of Umbral Ice or Astral Fire. On top of this, their long cast times are a non-issue due to the stage 3 bonus of cutting the cast time in half of the opposite element. Blizzard 3 and Fire 3 should only be used to switch state, and they are not worth casting in other situations. This means that now your rotation requires you to keep up Thunder and cast Thunder whenever Thundercloud procs, and then you use Fire 3 followed by Fire 1 until you can't anymore, then use Blizzard 3 and spam Blizzard 1 until you're full on MP, and then repeat. Usually, you need to use two spells aside from Blizzard 3 to reach full MP. You can still use Transpose to stay in a state while running between fights, but it is not very important for your rotation right now. At level 40, you learn the spell Freeze, which does more damage than Blizzard 2, but can only be used if you already are in Umbral Ice. Additionally, Freeze does not refresh the Umbral Ice timer. At this level, your Umbral Ice state on AoE starts with Blizzard 2, followed by Thunder 2, and then, if not at full MP yet, use Freeze. As long as you have at least 9000 MP, it is safe to enter Astral Fire, as you will only be able to afford 3 Fire 2s after entering Astral Fire anyway. At level 42, you learn the trait Firestarter, which gives your Fire 1 a high chance of making your next Fire 3 cast free and instant. If you pay attention to your action bars, you can see the dashed lines around Fire 3 indicating this proc about half a second before your cast of Fire 1 finishes. And you can, and should, immediately use this proc at no loss. If you don't catch the proc in time and are already busy casting another spell, don't cancel, and simply use Fire 3 after that spell instead. If you have both Firestarter and Thundercloud, use Thundercloud first. At level 44, you learn the role action and ability Surecast. This ability makes you immune to most knockbacks, but also makes you immune to interruption as a result of damage. What this means is that sometimes when you're hit with a particularly powerful attack, your casting is stopped. This cannot happen when Surecast is active. At level 45, Thunder 1 is permanently upgraded to Thunder 3, which significantly increases its duration and damage. This doesn't really change much, since you already wanted to use Thundercloud procs as soon as you got them. Thunder 2 is still barely better on 3 or more targets. At level 50, you learn the ability Aetherial Manipulation, which allows you to quickly teleport to the exact position of any other player in your party. You should practice the use of this ability a lot, as it is crucial to optimizing your play as a black mage. You also learn the spell Flare, which can only be used in Astral Fire, and is affected by it, and when cast, immediately spends all the MP you have. An interesting detail about Flare is that, as long as you have at least 800 MP, it will let you use it. You should always make sure to finish every AoE Astral Fire state with Flare. For single target, Flare is not worth using to cap off Astral Fire, unless you can pair it with Swift Cast to skip the enormous cast time which, additionally, should only be weaved on a Thundercloud proc or a Firestarter proc, which you should not save specifically for this. Flare is worth finishing Astral Fire states with on two or more targets, without Swift cast. Mana Font can also allow you to cast an additional Flare after the first one if you like. Do note, however, that you can afford both a Fire 1 and Flare after Mana Font. Now, to round off, let's cover an actual boss fight opener and rotation. Lead with Thunder 3, then Fire 3, and then Spam Fire 1, using procs as you get them. If you need to kickstart the rotation faster, you can also use Swift Cast to skip the somewhat slow cast of the initial Fire 3. Use Swift Cast and then Fire 3 first, then Thunder 3. If you get Thundercloud or Firestarter, you can weave Mana Font after them once you are below 7000 MP. This then leads to the general rotation. The Umbral Ice state is initiated with Blizzard 3, and then fills with Thunder 3, and Thundercloud procs if you get any, and Blizzard 1 until you have full MP, after which the Umbral Ice state is exited with Fire 3. The Astral Fire state is initiated with Fire 3, and fills with Fire 1s while using any Thundercloud or Firestarter procs as soon as you get them. If Thunder runs out during Astral Fire, you should reapply it even in Astral Fire. Once you don't have any MP left to use Fire 1, exit Astral Fire with Blizzard 3. If you have Swift Cast and you know you won't need it, you can use it after a Firestarter or Thundercloud proc, after your final Fire 1, to finish with Flare. Note that the damage gained from using this trick is very small, so if you need the Swift Cast for something else, it is better to save it. On two targets, you can also use Flare to finish every Astral Fire state, regardless of whether you use Swift Cast or not, although Swift Cast does make it even better. Make sure to use Mana Font for the extra one or maybe two Fire Ones it may yield. 
on three or more targets, replace Thunder 3 with Thunder 2, Fire 1 and 3 with Fire 2, and replace Blizzard 3 with Blizzard 2, and Blizzard 1 with Freeze, using Freeze as the extra filler if you need it. Always finish Astral Fire States with Flare on three or more targets, and make sure to use Thundercloud procs on Thunder 2 whenever you get them. If Mana Font is available, you can use it either to use Flare twice back to back, or you can use Fire 1 followed by Flare so the extra MP does not go entirely to waste, although using Flare quicker may be more valuable. It is important that you enter Astral Fire with at least 9800 MP, as otherwise you won't be able to cast Flare at the end. Additionally, do not cast Thunder 2 without Thundercloud during Astral Fire. Finally, if you have an Aether that grants at least 800 MP, any high quality Aether will do, or anything above Mega Aether for normal quality. You can use this to chain an additional Flare cast. If you don't need Swift Cast for anything else, remember that Swift Casting Flare is also great on AoE. Now, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and my channel, you can make sure to let the YouTube algorithm know by liking the video, leaving a comment, subscribing, and hitting the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you want to give even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel like these wonderful people here. Fun fact, before Endwalker, you learned Fire 3 at level 35, but learned Blizzard 3 and Aspect Mastery 3, or rather the equivalent at the time, at level 40, meaning that Fire 3 was not very helpful for the first five levels you had it. The trait Magic and Mend 2 originally just also granted access to Umbral Ice 3 and Astral Fire 3 as a side bonus.